Hello everybody, Cat Chow Yum here again. In light of the announcement of Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, a rhythm game featuring over 140 songs and battle themes from the Kingdom Hearts series, oh yeah, you heard that right, I wanted to get properly hyped by taking a look back at some of the amazing music the series has brought us over the years. I have hunted through all of my favorite and most emotionally powerful tracks from the games and have selected my top 10 favorite pieces of music from the Kingdom Hearts series. I won't be using music from Kingdom Hearts 3 or for games which did not have a released official soundtrack, just because those songs don't have official names yet, so we are going to leave them out this round, maybe for another video. Also, spoiler warning for the Kingdom Hearts series, as many of the most narratively poignant moments in the series had some of the best music. So without further ado, let's play it. Enchanting and haunting, this is the theme of the series, and for good reason. There is something so soothing and at the same time exciting and mysterious about this piece. The simplicity of the main piano melody coupled with the lush background is woven together just so to evoke feelings of longing and even a quiet fear of what might happen if one ventures out too far into the darkness. This theme has evolved and grown over the years, with more orchestral elements added to the background and more interesting introductions, but the core melody has remained a classic staple of the series. As far as video game themes go, this one is right up there with Tuzanarkin from Final Fantasy X for me in terms of being one of the best themes of all time, and with every time I boot up a Kingdom Hearts game and hear this theme, I know I am ready to see these characters and these stories and to experience them in a new way all over again. Talk about an epic battle theme. Only reserved for pivotal boss fights and high level encounters, this exhilarating piece feels as if it is choreographing the fight itself. Some of my most frustrating fights are fought to this piece, Maleficent's dragon form, the secret boss in Agrabah, which looks awesome and was hard as doing it for the platinum. And even a stage of the final boss fight in the first game was set to this music. Just listening to it now gets my heart racing. I can almost hear the beeping in my health bar yelling at me to heal if only someone didn't use up all the potions I gave them and then get themselves KO'd. This track was first heard in an endgame secret scene known as Deep Dive. It later would be used in remix versions of the game and other games in the series as a battle theme for intense and story relevant boss fights as well as in some important cutscenes. This track is just classic Kingdom Hearts. Cryptic, emotional, flashy, and addictive. There is a sense of urgency about this track, and seeing as it is often used during times when the player has likely no idea what the heck is happening story-wise because something is once again being revealed long before it will ever be explained, if it ever gets explained, the intangible nature of this one is a perfect mix to complement the emotional chaos. Yoko Shimomura, you have once again outdone yourself. Do I even need to explain this one? I mean, you are hearing this, right? It sounds like it could be an instrumental of a Vampire Weekend song, mixed with some jazzy Mario-esque flourishes, just in case you weren't getting enough 2000s platformer vibes already. This song is our first introduction to world themes in the series, and it definitely doesn't disappoint. It's hopeful, exciting, and fills you with just the right amount of wanderlust and optimism to prepare you for anything you might see out there in that big scary world. Or maybe we can just stay on this island forever and fight Riku. Yeah, let's do that! I don't know why it is that this one hits me so hard. The lilting melody and poignant use of this track during mostly reflective and nostalgic cutscenes really work to solidify this one as a theme of remembrance and a longing for what's past. This tune just feels like Kingdom Hearts to me. Like, it somehow fully encapsulates the simple nostalgic and gripping emotional hold that the game has on me. The melody is simple at first listen, but the repetition and atmospheric background can slowly lull the listener into a sentimental trance. The first time we hear this theme is in the first Kingdom Hearts game, when reflecting on Sora's memories throughout the game. 
This makes its use all the more powerful when, during the prologue to Kingdom Hearts 2, we see flashbacks of Sora's memories while playing as Roxas. It is an emotional callout to the first game and the adventures Sora had. It is as comforting as it is somber, because as a player we recognize these scenes, but to Roxas, these are the memories of someone whom he has no recollection of ever meeting, and someone whose story will eventually overtake his own. You crying yet? So this is technically, or at least according to the official soundtrack, listed as two or three separate tracks in the set, depending on what you count as still being part of this melody or not. Destati has seen a lot of different arrangements and name changes and reorchestrations, so for this list I'm going to keep it simple and honestly all of the parts of this melody that come and go throughout different points in the game's openings all flow right into one another, so I truly think of them more like one complete work with multiple movements rather than individual pieces. The main way that you may recognize this collection of tracks is as the pick your weapon and fight a dark side heartless theme. Call it Dive into the Heart, Destati, Fragments of Sorrow, or whichever they feel like titling it for the particular game, this theme is present in all of the main title games and all the versions are gorgeous, but the thing that I will never forget is how haunting this transition was to hear as a kid playing through the first game for the first time. Just listen to this. Oof, this melody and that strong piano is just so heavy. The chords feel incomplete in the most critical of ways, as this track represents the character of Roxas, one who is incomplete himself. Without getting too deep into the lore here, because that's a topic for a whole other video, the fragmented melody and the large intervals and gaps in the piece are intentional and an amazing job by Yoko Shimamura in creating a song that not only fits the character of Roxas, but describes who he is. He is a shell of others' memories, taking on a personality of his own and struggling to become whole. He only exists because others were overcome by darkness at some point, and so pieces of them live on through Roxas. The whole introduction of Roxas and the nobodies into the series is sort of the beginning of what I think is one of the most interesting aspects of the game philosophically, as well as the beginning of the long-running confusion about the Kingdom Hearts storyline and all the lore that seems to keep tripping over itself. But I digress. This song just has that Yoko Shimamura atmospheric existential sadness that I love, and in all the right amounts. If this one sounds a little similar to the Roxas theme, that's because it sort of is. It is in every way intended to be an alternate version of essentially the same melodic ideas used within Roxas and Sora's themes. Roxas was born out of partially Ventus's heart falling to darkness and finding refuge within Sora's. If you are a Kingdom Hearts nerd, you already know this, and if you aren't, then don't worry about it. The relevant point here is that if Roxas' theme sounded incomplete, like it was a melody that had been broken apart, then this song is the intended whole that precedes it. This is true both thematically in reference to the characters and musically, as Ventus' theme literally takes ideas used in Roxas's and fills them out with more complete and happier sounding major chords taken from Sora's theme to give a more hopeful and full sound. That's not to say that this track and Ventus' story are not equally as tragic, but they certainly aren't exclusively so. Where the Cadences and the Roxas theme descend and end in a sort of defeated sadness, Ventus' theme builds these similar phrases higher towards the end and lifts them up with ascending notes, resulting in an overall more hopeful feeling amidst the bittersweet tune. Hit like if you cry every time. emotional swell. This is the main theme for the first game. The orchestral version is the one you hear now, and you may recognize it as the version played from the first game menu screen if you let your controller sit idle for too long. Hikari is the instrumental version of the more commonly known Simple and Clean from Hikaru Utada, which is used in the opening of the first game. Simple and Clean is an absolute bop, and I have a place in my heart for the original version as well. Just take a listen. You're good. 
Is that not just angsty 2000s JRPG pop at its finest? The orchestrated version you hear was arranged by Kaioru Wada into what I can only describe as pure magic. The intensity, the passion, the phrasing, it's just perfection. Before we get to number one, I want to shout out a few tracks I love but didn't get to fit into this list. Alright, here it is, the moment of truth. A true masterpiece, folks, and my favorite piece of Kingdom Hearts music of all time is... Passion. Utada Hikaru is back for round two, and she went ham on creating another emotional bop for the second game in the song Sanctuary. Here, j just have a quick listen. Killer, am I right, folks? And then on top of an already amazing song, Kaioru Wada returns to arrange this one into another brilliant masterpiece to serve as the theme song for the second game in the version you hear here. Insane, my dudes. Absolutely insane. The punchy background and intensity of the instrumentation all create this sort of surreal feeling of just immersion into the world of the characters in the game. As much as I love Hikari, this song just takes what the two did in the first game and raises the bar to the absolute level. And then some. This song is Kingdom Hearts 2. A vibrant and dynamic, emotionally charged punch to the gut. Just as is the game itself. So, there it is. My top 10 ranked list of Kingdom Hearts music pieces. Yes, the top two were themes for the game because I'm basic like that, but who can blame me? I mean, you heard that stuff too, right? Obviously music is something that has a lot of nostalgia and emotion tied to it. The pieces in this list are very important to me for reasons beyond their pure composition, so certainly many of you will have different favorites, or maybe even not so nice memories of the pieces I did pick. Let me know what you think, and hash it out in the comments, friends! Don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this video with your friends if you like what I do. I'm a very new channel in a big YouTube world just trying to get my name out there, so any little bit of support is so appreciated. Thank you everyone for checking this one out, and happy gaming! Catch How Yum, signing off!